It's an interesting question to speculate on what economic impact booze might have had in the 19th century. The, the prohibitionists, of course, constantly talked about the liquor traffic, capital L, capital T, and they believed that all of the interests that produced alcohol, including the ones that sold it, of course, the tavern keepers, um, were a pernicious bunch that were making masses of money off the, the backs of the poor downtrodden who got drunk and didn't take their money home to their poor wives and children. Well, in actual fact, they, aren't, they were totally wrong. Um, it wasn't the most important industry, uh, but it was certainly a significant industry. Uh, every community of any size had a brewery. It was a, it was a product that didn't travel very well uh, in the days before preservatives and before uh, refrigerated trains and whatnot. And <clears throat> though some of those breweries turned into major, major producers. Toronto had oodles of them, probably at 15 or 20 over, over a period of time, and at least half a dozen major s serious uh, competitors on a, on a national scale. Montreal similarly had a, a large numbers, a number. So by the early 20th century, you've got um, the Molsons, the Carlings, the, um, uh, the Labatts, all, all very big local brewers that are reaching out to larger markets. And the owners of those industries are s usually significant, um, not just community leaders, but have moved into politics and have, have become part of a, um, a national uh, business elite in, in various ways. Um, distilling is even bigger. Distilling, distilleries tend to be much bigger. They're, they produce a product that can be shipped more easily, that isn't as unstable. And so uh, they tend to have to be fewer in number, but to be much bigger. So on the waterfront in Toronto, you can still see the buildings of the Goodrum and Wirtz operation, which was the biggest in the British Empire in the early 1860s and was proudly proclaiming the amount that it could produce on, a, on a, an annual basis, which was vastly greater than anything the backwoods whiskey producers had been able to imagine in just a few decades earlier. Um, and the Goodrums became very big and powerful in the city, and um, their counterparts in Montreal and, and uh, Windsor and so on were equally uh, significant players. All of which meant that, oh, and in addition, be, before I go further, in addition, um, whiskey or, or spirits were considered to be an extremely important product for taxation purposes. So that the government actually had agents in every distillery to make sure that the product was pure and was being produced properly because they made so much of their money, governments made so much of their money off excise taxes uh, in the 19th century. And that, that gave the, the people who produced those spirits a, a very important status in the community. Um, you, you see their grand and, and, uh, and uh, their grand mansions that, that were, they were able to produce as a result of that. And, and they, you see in the, woven into the history the role that they played in, in politics and, and uh, national development, which was, which was significant. They weren't, uh, they weren't players like the big uh, pulp and paper companies, and they, they, didn't, uh, uh, they couldn't compete with uh, some other major industries, but they were very significant.